how much fun do you have playing Damien's dearest friend in some ways? Nice. And yet you have this whole under other thing going on at the same time. Oh, it's a hoot. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it, it's uh, it's. I just I love the way the John Lyons was introduced. You know, sitting there and what was the line? Something that there comes a moment when every uh, if something can fall apart. Fall everything apart. can fall apart. And I, just, I love the way that he's introduced to the show, and I love his. Uh, I, I think Damien is, uh, Bradley James is doing a terrific job as Damien. So it, it's, uh, it, it's fun. And having worked with Glenn before, it, it uh, was an easy choice to, to, uh, to work with him again. And not choice, but I was thankful that he... I didn't give you a choice. Together. So <laughs> you got to do this. You're coming. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, Fox came to me and, and said, you know, we have this property of the Omen, this classic film, and uh, they actually asked if I would, um, I was developing some other material for them, some other pilots, and they said, well, will you find a writer and supervise that writer and, and maybe develop a take or something? It was very early. I said, well, I love the film. No, I, I'll, I'll write it myself. <laughs> you know, so, so I spent some time thinking about what I would do with it. And I thought, you know, let's, uh, although I enjoyed the second and third films, I wanted to go back to that character, you know, of Damien Thorne and say, well, what happens if he's, you know, a perverted version of Christ? You know, he's the Antichrist. Can we hit that? That religious mythology a little harder and, and, and really examine what does that mean to be a person who, if Christ is, you know, fully divine and fully human, what if we had a character that was fully human and fully evil? And that, right away, you get a conflict right there. Who wants that? You know? And so, so that, I felt, was a way to create a character that would allow us hopefully many seasons to examine that journey as he crosses, as he embraces one or the other. So uh, it, was, it was an opportunity that I jumped at. In the fourth episode, you had there's that great bit where the cop is pushing Amy, Damien and threatening him. Mm -hmm. And Damien comes back for the first time and embraces a little mm -hmm. bit of his mm -hmm. darkness. Mm -hmm. So is that something that you can only tease in a sense because you can't have him transition too quickly over to... Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, but, you know, it, let's talk about this. You know, um, Damien's starting to realize, I think he's been avoiding the fact that he has a dark energy around him. Okay, and, that it, and he's learning at the end of episode three, um, Barbara's character, Anne, says, this dark energy is pinned to you. So now, and he sees that, he realizes he's, he just, you know, <laughs> it resulted in a death. In episode four, now he's being squeezed, okay? It's, it's, he's being, his back's against the wall. It's like, well, I've got a card to play. Don't fuck with me. <laughs> Do not fuck with me. I'm the Antichrist. You don't want to go down that road. And that, that's, you know, and, and why wouldn't he play that card? I mean, this is a guy who has been in shock for the first few episodes because of this death, because of this baptismal event, all the stuff that's happening. And he's like, you know what? You don't want me to be the Antichrist. So it's, it's interesting that he would suddenly play that card when he's under pressure. And that's what the show does. Uh, for the next few episodes as we keep increasing pressure on Damien so that we see him going further and further down that road you know so you're seeing it you're seeing a little turn what happens when that turns bigger who gets hurt all of that stuff that's the story we're telling and it makes him more proactive in a lot of ways yeah it feels like yeah. uh, as it goes on yeah I mean there's a long uh, road and 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 yeah, he is very active, and you and you'll see, he becomes more and more active. But I think we had to take him from, you know, uh, a thing where uh, at the beginning of the show he's in hiding, he's in denial, he's in pain, you know, he's sort of, um, you know, um, not himself in a sense. How does that that character develop? That that's interesting to me. Was it yeah. tough to figure out at at what point do we have Damien believe that though? And, and, and show that, that he believes. There's different levels of belief. You'll see that, that in every episode he starts getting more and more information. So sometimes it's an external type of information. You know, when Anne explains to him, well, there were these conspiracies, there's factions, there's this, there's these different groups. That seems 
you know, narcissistic to believe the whole world revolves around him. Okay, so he's always got to think he's crazy. But then there's an internal thing as well, is, is this really me? Is what they're saying true? And that, that's the dilemma. And you'll see that that, that is the central question of, of, you know, what does Damien believe internally? I guess I'm thinking about it now. I would say that's probably the central question of every single episode from now until the, the end of the, the, uh, the season. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> As far as you're saying that um, Damien is part human to part evil, as the season goes on, the season becomes less human and more evil. He's always fully both. That's It's kind of interesting, but it depends on... You know, as we're saying, what suits his agenda? Right now, he's the victim of other people's agendas, and we'll see that. And it's it's it'll be interesting to see what actions he takes and how does he try to get ahead of it. You know, he doesn't want to just be, you know, a patsy for John Lyons and Ann Rutledge. He wants to be his own man, and that this is the story of his his dealing with extraordinary circumstances in his life and trying to figure out how to how do I have a life? You know, I mean, he can't uh, have a relationship. You know, if he does, the person's at risk. If he sends that person away, they die anyway. Look at episode one. So, you know, he's, he's under a lot of pressure, and it's, it's a matter of him trying to figure out how can he get through this. And there's really no way through it, you know? So that, that's the pressure he's under. So question for you. So we, we've already talked to Barbara and asked about Anne, and we kind of see the dynamics of her relationship with Damien. Now for John, it's it's kind of questionable right now because we think you know, he's, he's watched after Damien almost as a father for all these years, mm -hmm. and he's a confidant, of course. Um, are we going to be able to, are we seeing that relationship develop and also become maybe a little different than what we're, we're seeing as kind of black and white right now, where... Um, we're, we're looking at John maybe and so, um, doing that manipulation and control of Damien versus just being a true friend to him. I think so. I mean, yes, because I think Anne and John Lyons have uh, parallel and in competing interest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that they both are, are uh, interested in controlling uh, Damien. And I think that it's that's... Uh, it's, it's interesting and it's a little, I don't know, there's, there's something a little scary about it as well to, to think you can control a force that they believe that he has. If you can, then you, you're the man <laughs> or the woman or the, if, if, uh, if you can't, then you're, you're uh, setting yourself up for a long fall. <laughs> and a rather spectacular and plausible death in an omen story. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's, an it, it's interesting to me how the, the uh, how their relationship evolves through the, the rest of the episodes. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to set the beginning of the show in Syria considering what's been going on in Syria? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you know, we, it was really interesting because originally we were thinking, you know, this story needs to open in the Middle East. And we were thinking, well, should it open in Jerusalem? And then we, uh, we were thinking of, you know, other places, Egypt, or just, you know, it was, it was a discussion. We finally, believe it or not, because we were filming in Toronto in the winter, we needed a place in the Middle East in which people could wear heavy coats, okay? And Syria does get cold. So we picked Syria before that migrant crisis really hit the news, okay? Before everything exploded. We, we, so it was just one of those things. And there have been other, other things that we've written into the show that then oddly somehow you know, a few weeks later, you you say, "Well, wait a minute, that's that's an odd coincidence." You know, so it's it's well, been it's. it's so it, no, I'm not saying that, but it's just it, it was just <laughs> it was just it was just weird. So so we ended up, you know. So then I was worried about the the idea of Syria because does it look like we're ripping from the headlines or we're trying to make a point or whatever? And what I was proud about that scene was that it just showed humanity. It just showed people trying to live a life and they're being displaced and all of that. And I felt that it really showed. 
Damien connecting with them on a on a human level, and and it's actually that's probably the only time in the in the show where he's happy. Okay, so it's it's kind of interesting that then you know these people become refugees, and and in a way perhaps he does or he gets displaced as well. He get you know, so that that was that was um, interesting. We did add a line where. One of the priests says, you know, the road to Rome goes through Damascus because of St. Paul's conversion was on the road to Damascus. So that sort of fit thematically. I also felt that, you know, the fact that Damien is a war photographer, and if you look at how the Syrian crisis broke in the, in the news, we did not understand the magnitude of that crisis until we saw that image of that little toddler washed up on the beach. So the fact that a single image can really change the world's perspective, you know, sort of with something else that we were already writing about. So, you know, I have, I have, I do know that some people are saying, well, shouldn't he be a senator, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, you know, this doesn't feel like the omen or whatever. I've seen some, some criticism like that. But one, I think a picture can change the world. And two, you know, I would say, well, Jesus was a carpenter. That didn't make sense to people. People were expecting their Messiah to be a general at that time. So the fact that we've, you know, kind of steered closer to the Christ version of this story than the expected mustache twirling demagogue that perhaps people are expecting is just what we do in the show. We just are really trying to say what's going on in the world. There's evil in the world. There are these questions that people are facing. Let's examine that and not just try to service um, what people, uh, what is the obvious version of this story. So, so it's, it's been a really, really interesting process as a writer and a, as a producer to go through. How, how did it change um, by going from the this, this six episodes into ten? Did, did, it, um, did you feel like you were able to open up certain stories mm -hmm. now? Yeah, um, yeah we, we were able to open up the world. And so, you know, if, if you look at the first few episodes, we're really focused on Damien and a tight circle of people around him. And starting with episode six and, and particularly episode seven, you know, all of a sudden we start introducing, you know, um, 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 the world just opens up. You'll see what I'm, you know, we have, we have, you know, people coming at Damien, all of this, you know, Dam and, and we really, it was a gift. It was great because I think it, it kind of, um, the show develops and reinvents itself in the back half. So whereas we put all our, efforts on on developing the characters now that those characters were up and running we could sort of develop the story in surprising ways so it, it opens up um but i will say you know the show um you know the show gets dark okay i mean we've we've had some dark episodes already in three three episodes and we're dealing with dark you know even um at the end of episode three he's describing this massacre that he witnessed and you can see he's traumatized that's a really dark story um, wait until you see what we do in episode five or, you know, episode six is dark. And then, I mean, it's, I, I, I didn't realize I was such a dark person until <laughs> a, a couple of days ago. And, uh, you know, like, like, wait until, are you coming into the room to see what we're doing? Cause we're going to, we're going to, we're going to show something that when we, we're going to show a scene that when my wife watched it, she actually walked out and said, you're sick. And my, my kids were like, Dad. And I was like, well, I thought it was entertaining. So I, I have a high bar for horror. <laughs> Is there any room for any levity at this point now? Now that you've, now that he's been kind of bad. You know guy. what? It's, it's funny because there's a, there's a dark humor yeah. in it. Now, I also thought the shield was very funny and yeah. maybe people didn't. But um, <laughs> so what I think is funny is probably not what anyone else on the planet thinks is funny. But, you know, <laughs> you know, a lot of it has to do with, with um, Anne's character and her delivery. And she has just a way to cut things down and she's so much fun to write for and and so it's about that and then and then once Damien I think sort of embraces this darkness this absurdity around him people start realizing okay this world 
is absurd. This makes no sense. What is happening here? Everything's been turned upside down. So I won't say that there's levity, but there's little flashes of, of hopefully um, um, wit, maybe. But I don't want to say as a writer I have wit, but I'll say my other writers had wit. So. <laughs> okay. you know, David Seltzer, had, when he wrote The Omen, had done incredible amounts of research, uh -huh. and whole biblical research. How much of that do you guys have to do for the show? I have done a tremendous amount of biblical research. I, uh, I have always wanted, you know, uh, about 12 years ago, I walked into my agents and I said, I would love to write a show about the building of, of the Catholic Church. And they said, no one's ever going to make that. Okay, it's already been on and all of this. It was basically AD or whatever, but I wanted to do that version. I have kind of a gritty thing. So I've done, I've, I've read all those texts. I've done a tremendous amount of research. I have book sh an entire bookshelf filled with that sort of stuff. In a way, this is my passion project. It's the building of an evil church, okay? <laughs> but those dynamics are the same, okay? You know, watch. But, but you know, we, we've done that research. And, and uh, one of our writers, her husband is a uh, theologian, and he actually... Uh, had not read the script or seen early cuts, and he's watching the show on and he, he, uh, the show on air, and he felt that the theology was pretty, um, pretty tight. So, so I'm, I, I was proud of that because we did take it seriously, and I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I don't, I haven't heard anybody, you know, any any backlash from religious groups about the show. They, they're probably not watching it, but if they were. They would see we're taking that stuff seriously. We're not just kind of, you know, doing a pastiche or throwing things together. We're really being very thoughtful about that and, and respectful and, and, and saying let's examine those, th those, those things, you know, that we're taught, particularly as a Catholic, and, and you know, how do they play or, and resonate in today's world?